Hello, today's topic is hormones again. So I finished my hormonal balance series quite a while ago and to be honest, I've kind of missed the topic of hormones and the truth is that most emails that I get from you are all about hormonal balance. So I think it's a topic that is really important to so many of you. So I feel it's my responsibility to keep talking about it in videos from time to time. So today's topic is going to be the real truth that nobody really talks about when it comes to the differences between synthetic progestins and natural progesterone. So what are the sources of synthetic progestins in a woman's body? It's things like birth control pills, birth control shots like the Provera, and also the conventional hormonal replacement therapy. But the problem is that when women are prescribed these medications, most are not even told about the dangers of using synthetic progestins. Most are not even told that synthetic progestin is not actually progesterone. A lot of doctors don't even know that they're two completely different things. Progestins are synthetic alternatives to natural progesterone and they're not naturally derived in any way. They're not bioidentical, so the molecules, the molecular structure is totally different from the natural progesterone. Now you might be wondering why is natural progesterone not used? Why do people and doctors actually prescribe synthetic progestin? And the answer is very simple, money. Pharmaceutical industry, just like any industry, is obviously about making money because it's business. So natural progesterone cream is natural. It's a product derived from nature. So it's not something that can be patented, it's not something that companies can have exclusivity on, it's not something that they can charge crazy prices for, which means that the chance to make money is very limited. That's why it's not really interesting for pharmaceutical companies and that's why it's not really promoted. And that's why not many people, not many doctors are aware of it. So what are the side effects of taking synthetic progestin? The side effects are things like bloating, especially in the belly area, sore boobs, which honestly I still remember how bad it was when I was on the pill for 10 years. Also depression. Interestingly, there have been a lot of studies recently connecting um, the use of birth control pills to depression, especially in young girls and young women. And together with depression, we also have mood swings and fatigue and also all kinds of rashes, acne, um, excessive hair all over the body, but loss of hair on the scalp, weight gain, diarrhea, constipation, and all kinds of sleep problems dry eyes, itchy eyes, all kinds of allergies. These are all side effects of synthetic progestins. And again, nobody really talks about it and it's a shame. So you might notice that all of these symptoms are almost identical or actually identical to those of estrogen dominance and low progesterone. And that's not a coincidence. It's because estrogen dominance is exactly what birth control pills cause or synthetic progestin causes. So progestins have so many side effects and all kinds of issues that they cause in the body. At the same time, they provide pretty much zero benefits that natural progesterone provides. So for example, natural progesterone protects women from, um, from heart attacks, but progestins don't. And the worst thing is that using synthetic progestin means that your body reduces or completely stops the production of its natural progesterone. And even worse than that is that synthetic progestins actually clog up all the receptors of progesterone in your body, which means that even if you were producing your natural progesterone, you simply won't be able to absorb it or use it in any way. Also, an interesting fact I read is that during pregnancy, the body produces huge, huge amounts of progesterone in order to, you know, to develop the baby and progesterone is so important that if a woman doesn't have enough of it then she'll have miscarriage. So if a woman is found to have low progesterone levels during pregnancy she'll be prescribed progesterone. So as you can see it's vital and very supportive to pregnancy. But the interesting thing is that progestins are not advised for pregnancy at all. They're actually believed to cause best effects. So next time your doctor tries to tell you that there's no difference between synthetic progestin and progesterone, ask them why is it not allowed during pregnancy if it's 
the same as progesterone. So let's talk a little bit more about what progestin does to our bodies. So one interesting thing is that synthetic progestins actually reduce the levels of electrolytes in your cells. So things like potassium, magnesium, no wonder so many of us are running low on those. Not only because of all the stress in the environment, but also because we're so overloaded on synthetic progestins. You might already know that birth control pills are known to increase the risk of blood clots. And that's again because of synthetic progestins. Hair loss. So many women start going through hair loss when they get on the birth control pill. And nobody bothers to tell them that it could be the pill. Also, so many women start having gum recession when they start taking birth control pills. And again, nobody tells them that it's all because of the birth control pills. Synthetic progestins also decrease your glucose sensitivity, which means that you won't be able to process carbs as well. As you can see, there are a lot of things that synthetic progestins do wrong. But natural progesterone, on the other hand, is extremely healing, extremely calming for the body, and it has so many different incredible benefits. It's really like the mother hormone that so many other steroid hormones are made out of, like cortisol, like testosterone, estrogen, everything is made out of progesterone. So that really illustrates how important it is for the body. It also protects women from a few different cancers like breast cancer, ovarian cancer and wound cancer. It stops hair loss and helps you grow the hair back. It also reduces any kind of hair around the body that shouldn't really be there. It also improves the libido, it helps you lose weight, it improves your thyroid function, it improves your fertility, it improves bone formation. So for example, it's very important for healthy teeth and also it helps you sleep better. So many women start having sleep issues when they are when they start taking synthetic progestins. And that happened to me as well. But natural progesterone is amazing. If you have good levels of natural progesterone, you will sleep like a baby. And all of these reasons are exactly the reason why it's so difficult to get off the birth control pills and why the transitional period is so difficult. That's because the body is really unable to produce progesterone anymore. It has forgotten how to do it. It needs to relearn it, but also because all the receptors are clogged up with that horrible synthetic progesterone wannabe. By the way, I made a video about how to get off the pill and rebalance the hormones naturally in the past, so definitely check it out. I'll link it here for you. And if you're looking for ways to prevent pregnancies, there are definitely natural ways you don't have to poison your body with artificial hormones. Also, if you are not producing enough progesterone, so if, you, if you lack it, there are ways to get more of it as well. For example, there is something called natural progesterone creams, which is bioidentical natural form of progesterone, which is also so helpful. Also, there are herbs like Vitex that promote your own production of progesterone. So there's so many different ways to deal with low progesterone or preventing pregnancy, and there's really no reason to to ingest all those synthetic progestins. Also, if you'd like to learn more about, about hormones, then I would definitely recommend a really, really helpful book, actually two books that are very similar by Dr. Lee, and they're called What Your Doctor May Not Tell You About Pre-Menopause, and then another book about menopause with exactly the same name. And those two books are seriously a must read for every woman. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you learned something interesting and I will see you in my next one.